Hello and welcome to Baiju's exam prep by AS. A very very warm good morning to everyone. I hope all of you are doing good. I welcome you back to in a Sunday morning for today's comprehensive news analysis of the Hindu newspaper. I hope all of you are doing good. Your preparation is going right on track. As always, we are here back at 10 a.m. to discuss the most important articles from the Hindu newspaper for today. And these are the topics that we have taken up for today's discussion. We'll be starting up our discussion with the problem of diabetes in India. As you know, on Sundays, we usually do not have a separate editorial page in the Hindu newspaper, but there are some other very important topics that come up. So there are a lot of other interesting news stories regarding health, science, and these kind of articles are usually pretty widespread in the Sunday edition. So first we'll be discussing about India's diabetes burden. The reason why we are discussing this is that a recent report came out by ICMR along with multiple other organizations. It was a long report. It has actually accumulated data over many years and talks to us about how diabetes has been prevalent in India, in what parts of India do we see diabetes and how can we curtail that. Second topic is again a news of data leak, this time from the Covin portal. As you know, Covin portal was a portal using which all of us or most of us at least booked our appointments to get the COVID-19 vaccination. So the COVID portal has data of almost every individual Indian. There was a news that came out that this data has been hacked. Many people on Telegram channel are able to get this personal data. Then we'll be discussing how India and the US are coming together to form multiple tech related partnerships, specifically the ICET. What exactly is this? How will it help India? Then We'll be discussing how Prime Minister Modi has appealed to the G20 members that the African Union should also get the membership of G20. And in the end, we'll be discussing how monkeypox, despite not being an emergency situation right now as per the WHO, monkeypox is still now spreading in other parts of the world. We are still seeing cases of, of monkeypox going on in some parts. So we'll be discussing what that is. Let's begin with the very first topic then. The first topic that we have here is about diabetes. Why is this article written? This is not written randomly. This is an article written based on a recent report that came out. It was a report that has been published by ICMR and an organization called INDIAB. They conducted this study and it has been going on for a long, long time. They conducted this study between 2008 and 2020 across the entire country across the different states and they have come up with some very very important and interesting data. Now what exactly does this report say? First the report says 11% of India's population is diabetic. So 11 out of every 100 individuals in India are diabetic. Not just this 15.3% are in the pre-diabetic stage. Now what is a pre-diabetic stage? Pre-diabetic means your sugar level, your glucose levels are usually higher than normal, but they have not reached the diabetic level. That is called pre-diabetic. So again, pre-diabetic means not at the normal level, your blood sugar is higher than normal, but it has still not reached the diabetic stage. The report also says over 10 crore people in India are diabetic, while 13.6 crore are at the pre-diabetic stage. So those who are at the pre-diabetic stage have a very high chance of going ahead and transitioning into the diabetic stage. WHO also says 42 crore people worldwide have diabetes. So if you actually see if 42 crore people worldwide have diabetes out of this, if 10 are in India, 10 crore are in India, that means almost, almost one in every four cases of diabetes is in India. Almost one in every four cases of diabetes is in India. WHO also says 15 lakh deaths are directly attributed to diabetes year after year. That is why a global target has been set. The countries are trying to eliminate the problem of diabetes by 2025. Now, diabetes is a very interesting kind of an issue. It also has a genetic pattern. It is also hereditary. In most of the cases, you will see if parents or the parents have diabetes, maybe the next offspring would also have it. And it is also linked to your lifestyle. 
how you conduct yourself are you in a active lifestyle or not do you actually see what you are eating or are you not taking care of what your diet is all these things mainly result into diabetics what are the implications means what exactly is the consequence of this number one it is now possible to make sure and this is important from the government's point of view also to stop as many pre-diabetic people from falling into diabetes. See, diabetes is a very, very bad disease. It has a lot of very, very difficult health complications. I'll give you a simple example. I don't know how many of you know this or not. So, for example, if someone is highly diabetic, let's say if they get a wound in their hand, let's say they fall off, the skin comes off, there's blood flowing. Do you know if you are very highly diabetic, your wound will not really heal your blood will keep on flowing and the blood will keep coming out it will just not heal these are some of the complications that you have with diabetes the report says there are multiple studies that show us about poor control of blood sugar leading to many different diseases and not just diabetes there are cardiovascular diseases there are kidney diseases neuropathy even blindness has been seen as a consequence of not having control over blood sugar there is a need to have much stronger public awareness campaigns now if you actually see this has happened in the past few years you would also agree whenever people are eating something they are becoming more health conscious you see so many products now are available in the market which tell you that it is let's say sugar free or high in fiber high in protein Earlier, we did not used to have or we did not used to pay so much attention. Now you see a lot of health related products specifically have entered the market because people are becoming more and more aware of this. This is the best food forward. You cannot automatically just take out diabetes. What you have to do is make the people much, much more aware. In urban India, we have 16.4% of cases of diabetes while in rural India, the cases are almost half. In rural India, the diabetes cases are about 8.9% of what India's cases are, while 16.5% of India's cases are in the urban areas. Now, this is also something which you would assume, right? In the rural areas, people obviously would be much more physically active as compared to urban areas. If you see in the urban areas, you would see that people actually going about their work they find other alternatives they don't really have a lot of time for physical labor but in the rural areas you have people undertaking physical labor at a much larger level that is why we have a situation where in the rural areas the number of diabetes cases are much much lower also are there any important pointers any surprises from this study yes first there's high prevalence in not just metro cities. You expect it in metro cities, people's eating habits are even worse. So you might expect in metro cities, many people would be suffering from diabetes. But the reality is, even in tier 2, tier 3 cities as well, we do have many diabetes cases. Second, usually you would think Kerala is a state with very high social indicators. You would think that Kerala would not have a lot of problem. However, in Kerala, prevalence in rural areas had come up very fast and has superseded in the urban areas. Again, in Kerala, where you expect people to have a healthier lifestyle, in Kerala, where social indicators are much healthier, in Kerala, however, on the other hand, opposite has happened. In rural areas of Kerala, there are very high diabetes cases that have come up as compared to the urban areas. There is also high prevalence in Tripura, Sikkim. Now, let's talk about the northeast states for a bit. You would assume that people having a diet which is very protein-based, non-vegetarian food, protein-based diet, you would think that in those cases, for example, diabetes cases would not be very high. If you, if you take your first impression of northeastern states, you would assume that the diet would be healthier, you would assume the people would be much more physically active, hilly terrain so people would have to obviously be much more active however interestingly in Tripura what has happened is in Tripura we do have high prevalence of cases that can also be because in Tripura there are a lot of people of Bengali origin in Sikkim also we have a lot of high diabetes cases so 
the assumptions that were made about rural areas always being healthier than urban areas is not true in case of Kerala. Similarly, the assumption that is being made of northeastern states not having a high prevalence of diabetes also is not true always as we can see in case of Tripura and in case of Sikkim. Now, as you all know, diabetes is mainly of two types. That is diabetes type 1 and type 2. Now, what exactly is the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes? See, the big difference is about insulin. In type 1 diabetes, your body is not able to produce insulin. While in type 2, your body is producing insulin, but it is not making it enough and it is not able to use it efficiently. Tell me this. Which of these is more dangerous or which of these impacts the children more? Which of these is more dangerous and which of these impacts the children more? What do you think? Type 1 or type 2? Okay. See, type 1 is very dangerous. Type 1 is considered as more dangerous. Why? Type 1, for type 1, there is no prevention method. If your body is just not producing insulin, there is no method to prevent that. If your body is making lesser amount of insulin or your insulin is not being used efficiently, then you can maybe improve it by having a healthier lifestyle. You can get some external insulin support also. But you would be able to ensure that you have a better lifestyle. Type 1 is more dangerous. Also type 1 is the one that usually develops during childhood. Usually during childhood, although it can develop at any stage, but usually during childhood is when you have prevalence of type 1. On the other hand, type 2 is usually common in adults that are over 45. Again, I am not saying that these don't have any exception. For type 2 also, you might have an exception. People at a very young age can have it. For type 1 also, there may be an exception where people at older age may also have it. But usually this is how these two are different from each other. Now, there are multiple initiatives related to diabetes that have been taken in India and around the world as well. In India, we have something called National Program for Prevention and Control of Cancer, Diabetes, Cardiovascular Diseases and Stroke. We also have the World Diabetes Day. We have the Global Diabetes Compact. All these initiatives have been taken. Now, please understand this. There are two types of diseases broadly. There are non-communicable diseases. And then there are communicable diseases. The difference is when you have a non-communicable disease, people usually think it is not very threatening. Please understand the difference between the two. Understand a communicable disease, let's say COVID-19, how the world reacted to it. When we had COVID-19, we knew that it can be communicated from one person to the other person. How they actually reacted, how everyone was so panicked, we took every single step possible. But on the other hand, when we have non-communicable diseases, let's say such as diabetes, your mind doesn't work in that way. You don't think it's so dangerous. For example, you are eating a lot of sweet or you are not supporting a healthy lifestyle because you think that non-communicable disease like diabetes will not happen to me. Because you think that no, this is not something that would impact me in my life. Although it would have a larger impact. But the problem is our mindset works in such a manner that we assume that the communicable diseases are more dangerous as compared to the non-communicable diseases. And this is where the difference actually lies in fighting against diabetes and other kind of different diseases. This was our first article for the day about diabetes. Let me quickly take up a few comments before I go ahead. Kishan is saying FSSI consider also has this dimension why in India there is widespread of diabetes as compared to other countries. See, widespread of diabetes depends on a lot of situation, depends on a lot of factors. Mainly it's the lifestyle. See, understand how our eating patterns are and compare that to eating patterns of other countries. For example, our eating pattern, we are mostly dependent on grains. We are a very carbohydrate heavy country. You would hardly have a meal where you don't have any grains. The protein consumption, fiber consumption is much lower. 
We are still at that stage where we give much more preference to our taste buds rather than the health factor. All these things come up and basically culminate into these kind of diseases being much, much heavier. Uh, Gunjan is saying why rural people are much more healthy. See, in rural areas, obviously, the physical labor is much, much higher. In, for example, let's say in urban areas, in cities, you, let's say you have to go to 2 kilometers or 3 kilometers, you will not walk. You would take your vehicle, you would do an auto or car or bus or whatever, but you will not really walk. But in the, let's say, in rural areas, in most of these cases, you will either, either cycle to it or you will go and walk. In rural areas, even in your day-to-day -day life, you don't have to go to gym to exercise. Your day-to-day -day life itself is an exercise. It may be fetching water, it may be fetching food, in a lot of these cases. But if you look at the urban areas, how people live in urban areas, that is very, very different. And that is why it is not the same. Satyam is saying, isn't genetic engineering a solution for type 1? Satyam, not so far. If it does happen, you will get to know soon. Then uh, Dr. Ranjita is saying, does hybrid crop food contribute to non-communicable diseases? Not in this article. If you see any WHO study conducted to prove that, maybe yes, you'll get to know if you Google it. Kenaya is saying, 16% are found in urban areas, 24% in rural areas, what about 76%? No, 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 Kenaya, you're, you're, no, 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 see. The total diabetic cases in India, let's say they are 24%. Out of that, let's say 16% are here, 8% are there. That is how they have divided. It's not that out of the total diabetic cases. This percentage is from the total population. So let's say 16% of people living in urban areas are suffering from diabetes. 8% of people living in rural areas are suffering from diabetes. That is how it works. Let's go ahead then. then I also... Once again, reminding you, as I remind you earlier as well, I am not a doctor. I am not a medical professional. Please do not ask for medical advices from me. If you want any medical advice for diabetes or whatever, what to eat, what not to eat, kindly go to a doctor. Or as many Indians do, go to a medical store and ask, yeah, this is happening to me, tell me what to do. Because that's what we do. So go to a doctor, go to whoever you want. I am not a medical expert. Please don't take my opinion on how to eat, what to eat, what not to eat. I am not an expert. Okay, let's go ahead then. The second article that we have here is about another data leak news that has come in from COVID. From COVID now. Now all of you would be aware of the COVID portal. The COVID portal became very famous in the COVID-19 crisis. It was a portal launched by the government of India where you can go and book your online vaccination appointments and then you can go and have those vaccination slots. The interesting part is COVID was not just about booking vaccination slots. It was doing a lot of other things as well. Apart from letting the people book their slots for vaccination, it was also keeping of track of how many vaccines are present in which part of the country, how many vaccines are being used, how many of them are going bad, how many of them have expired, etc., etc. All of that at the end of the day was being done by the COVID portal. The problem here is now the reports have come out that on Telegram, you can access information that should have been secured on the COVID portal. Government initially did not agree to this. Government did not accept that a data leak has happened. But now the government has said that yes, we have asked CERT in, that is the Indian government's organization to look into these cyber threats, to look into this case of how exactly has it happened. Now, what exactly is COVID, COVID portal, how does it work? Now, before going to COVID portal, etc., let me first tell you in very simple terms how all these things work. Please understand this. When you are making, let's say, an online portal or you are making an app, let's say we, we made the Baidu's exam prep app or you have other kinds of apps, etc., you need to have data storage. A lot of data will be stored. Let's take an example. Let's take a simple example of Facebook. So you made a Facebook account or you made an Instagram account, you upload your photos, upload your videos, etc. Where is it getting stored? It has to be stored somewhere, right? It has to be stored somewhere. So there are big companies around the world that provide the storage space to build apps, etc. So there are big companies around the world that provide the storage space. The leader right now in the world, the leading company who does this is AWS. 
AWS stands for Amazon Web Services. It's run by Amazon only. AWS is Amazon Web Services. So basically what you do is, let's say you want to build an app or you want to build a platform portal, whatever. You want to make a website where a lot of data will be stored. You require some storage space. So AWS, for example, is a leading company. There are many other companies that do that, but Amazon usually will do that. So when they give you these services, obviously it is very important to you that all your data is secured, right? So when, let's say you buy some space from Amazon Web Service, let's say you buy 100 giga uh, GB. Now, Amazon will assure you that, okay, we will preserve your data. We will keep your data secured. However, the app that you build on that, maybe your app has certain glitches and your data may be stolen from your app. So there's a difference between how companies such as AWS will try to preserve your data. But on the other hand, there is a situation where your own app the way that you build it, the website that you have built it, it may not be so secure and it may actually leak your data. So what has happened here in this case is, although the investigation is going on, but right now it seems that the problem was in the AW, in the app that the portal that was made from the side of the government. Other part of the problem was Covin was actually using a lot of very old infrastructures, digital infrastructures already built by the government. For example, Covin has a lot of different applications. It was using different digital infrastructure that existed earlier as well. For example, electronic vaccine intelligence network. It was an app that provided data on vaccine cold chains. Then Covin was also used in digital infrastructure for verifiable open credentialing, vaccine certification, how would it be issued for all of these different apps were used. When you use all these different apps, which are old apps, there is always a chance that you might get hacked and you might actually lose out on certain information. How has it happened? Why has it happened? Nothing is clear so far. Cert in is undertaking investigation. They will tell how and why has it happened. That is not really relevant for you. So you don't have to worry about that. As I said, Cloud services are given, storage services are given by different companies, this is Amazon's, Microsoft's, Google, all of these give, give these services. All of these promise that we will keep your data secure, we'll keep your data confidential. However, how does it actually stay confidential? That is still a debate. The government of India, for example, will not accept it is our fault. Government of India will say it is the fault of the company, the company will say, no, it is not our fault. It will be the fault of the government and how they have built the apps. From the examination point of view, you do not really have to focus on how the data breach ex exactly happened. Because this data breach, how is data stored? What was the compromise? You don't have to go into it. You will not really be asked this. That is a responsibility of certain. They will look into how it happens. What you have to focus on is the importance of having data protection law, the importance of having the government that takes these kind of issues very seriously. This is not the first time that such a data leak has happened. We have had these kind of data leaks in the past as well. The problem is a portal such as Covin has details of almost every Indian. You have a lot of important details that you had to imp that you had to put in on the Covin portal only and only then you would actually get any appointment on Coven. You would need to get all the information to Coven portal. All of that is now in a situation where it can be compromised. This is where we have to take it more seriously. The Supreme Court has anyway said time and time again, our right to privacy is a part of our fundamental rights. So it is a responsibility of the government to protect our private data from getting into anyone else's hands. Now certain I'm sure all of you know what CERTIN is. CERTIN stands for Computer Emergency Response Team. That is CERT. If you want to let it down. This is Computer Emergency Response Team. They are the ones that are responsible for handling any cyber threat that the government of India is facing. Any government organization facing any cyber threat will have to report to CERTIN. It was formed in 2004 and it works under Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. What do they do? They collect all the information about cyber incidents. 
they also forecast issue alerts to the government they also measure any emergency response they coordinate with all the cyber incidents they issue guidelines and advices for the government as well and they make sure that investigation for all these cases happens as quickly as possible what are some of the data protection initiatives that have been taken there are some at the international level and there are some at the national level at international level we have something called budapest convention on cyber crime it talks about sharing information with each other on cyber crime india is not a signatory to this convention do remember this the budapest convention on cyber crime india is not a party to it in india we have cyber surakshit bharat yojana launched in 2018 we have cyber swachhata kendra to detect different types of viruses etc we also have ic for i4c that is indian cyber crime coordination center it works under ministry of home affairs the reason why this is extremely important is that as countries are going digital more and more data is being stored online on these cloud services not just our personal data but also government data government secrets and we cannot afford or any of that to fall into hands of people who want to harm the country that was our second important article for the day okay kishan is saying why not government come up with legislation for data localization the kishan government is working on it does it doesn't happen overnight as you know government has already introduced multiple drafts for data localization data protection bill then as astitu is saying why government is so reluctant to bring strong data protection law it's, it's not that the government is reluctant government has already introduced multiple drafts the problem is with this kind of a law data protection who will decide how data will be stored it's very difficult to keep everyone happy someone will always have a problem with how data protection laws and these kind of laws are made so it's not that the government has not done it you have seen government introducing multiple drafts of this just that arriving to the ideal draft will take some time then uh can i saying do we have any mechanism to make sure storage space provided by aws i think i'll just scroll up slightly uh, do not take undue advantage of data with them can i yes so whenever the government signs any contract with these companies they have a very detailed contract don't think don't worry the government will not just give one call and then sign a contract these are very detailed contracts about what and how this data can be used and how it cannot be used so yes they do take a lot of care to make sure the data is not misused then uh ujwal is saying can general health initiatives be written in question related to diabetes in the mains ujwal yes if it is related to your date your general day to day health you can write it okay perfect let's move on then next is india and uh, america coming close to signing a lot of other technical agreements as well the one that was signed a few months back we had discussed about it earlier as well what is called the icet icet is initiative on critical and emerging technologies as the name suggests the idea is that the two countries will collaborate with each other to make sure that if there is any breakthrough invention of new technology in one country they will ensure that all the research data and help is shared with the other country as well so basically the two sides have agreed to work on semiconductors 6g technology how to bring about it ai all these kind of technologies will be shared with the two countries as a part of the icet it talks about artificial intelligence quantum computing semiconductors wireless telecommunication etc now the problem here is in these kind of agreement they look very good on paper that yes we will be getting a lot of state of the art technology from america but the problem is if you look at this one paragraph for example there is no concrete promises made that we will give you this data or we will not give you this technology it's a very generic kind of an agreement that we will help each other we will try and cooperate in these areas the problem here is in most of the countries especially the developed countries right now none of the developed countries want to share their latest technology with anyone for example if india wants to buy some weapons from the us 
for the longest time us had this policy that the weapons that the us military uses they will not sell them so they kept their own military weapons separate and they only supplied the other weapons to india that is why we preferred buying more from russia or ussr as compared to the us so these kind of critical technologies are extremely important and they are protected as a secret by most countries around the world in this initiative the two sides would be collaborating as we said on a lot of issues mainly in the field of ai developing new defense industrial cooperation having common standards for ai if you remember we just discussed a couple of days back something called the hap remember what was the hap that we discussed it was just i think about 3 4 days back remember what was the hap don't google now hap was hiroshima ai process remember the hiroshima ai process remember that the g7 countries for the first time ever coming in and discussing that we need to have regulations for ai at the international level similarly the two countries again india and us have also said we should have common standards for ai semiconductor ecosystem so that the world is not dependent on china only all these are focus areas of initiative now there are two ways to look at this first way to look at these kind of agreement as i said is these are very generic no specific promise has been made for example agreement doesn't say that if we develop something we make a breakthrough india will be the first country we will share it with nothing like this has been written this is a very generic kind of an agreement on the other hand what you can say is that india and usa are coming close on lot of other agreements for example you know that the two countries are at the final stage of signing a big jet engine deal i discussed it earlier as well that is ge which makes some of the most sophisticated fighter jet engines for planes around the entire world india from the side of india hal basically would get this and we would start manufacturing that in india not just for our requirement but we may even export it later on for fighter jets engine is their heart if you make the engine properly that is half the job done that is something that is about to be finalized when our prime minister visits also you would have seen the news about predator drones have you seen that predator drones india is planning to buy predator drones from usa the same drones which usa uses consider as some of the most advanced drones in the entire world so that is also an agreement that we have actually seen India US also have a defense acceleration ecosystem called Indus X in which the two countries will be coming together to collaborate on defense technologies apart from this jet engine as well so on one hand you might say agreements have been signed earlier as well but no solid concrete sharing of technology has happened but this time around it does seem like all these big agreements may actually culminate once the prime minister visits us in just a few days how icit will help india number 1 it would obviously help india to be much more assertive or to be much more upright against china it would also help india reduce our dependence on russian military technology we have seen during ukraine russia war maybe the russian weapons are not as good as strong as everyone thought so it's always good for us to have more com nations from where we can buy these products it will give a boost to our technology capabilities and also if we export it in the future like the jet engines it will help in economic growth of india as well now the interesting part is if you look at india us history in terms of collaboration especially the transfer of technology it has gone to up and down up and down considerably for example india initially when uh, when we started our nuclear program and space program it was actually kind of held by the us giving a lot of inputs directly indirectly our space program especially for example has been held by the us considerably however as and when india started its journey towards being a nuclear power in 1974 then in 1998 we saw india got sanctioned by the us multiple times 2005 the historic us india and civil nuclear deal was signed but even after civil nuclear deal was signed not a lot of technology transfer has happened 
on paper the india us civil nuclear deal was a big breakthrough but in reality not a lot has happened after that deal as well so on one hand we have signed multiple agreements in the past with the us but it would be right to say that we do not really have a situation where a lot of technology transfer has actually happened between the two sides at least so far this is the third article for the day from the mains point of view the same word different between narrow ai and general ai so narrow ai basically ai for a one specific purpose let's say in the field of defense only general ai is ai artificial intelligence use anywhere means but tier 1 city basically there's no proper definition but tier 1 city is big metro cities tier 2 cities are second level cities you can say in terms of population in terms of infrastructure there is no proper definition for this but it really depends on how you perceive usually the big metro cities are regarded as tier 1 cities then i have a question what is the benefit for us in developing india's coordination more than profit so see when the countries make such deals they are not just making it for the sake of profit it's much more than that for example usa would not want china to be the one big superpower in the world or in asia so obviously usa would want that some country nearby china becomes a more powerful so that china rather than trying to take on usa china is first trying to take on india so by helping india by making these countries such as india more powerful what us is trying to achieve is to make sure that china is pulled down in its own region in its own neighborhood rather than actually going ahead and trying to compete with the us that is how the long term planning is or strategic thinking is of these countries in order for your com competition to actually go down you would want to increase their own competition one or two more pawan is saying why don't india buy from european countries pawan we do buy from european countries from where do you think we bought the rafals so it's not that we don't buy from european countries we do buy from european countries as well perfect let's move ahead then from the pillars point of view there are a couple of uh, important topics first prime minister modi has proposed to the g20 countries that african union that is a au should also be given membership of g20 what is au as you know au is african union it's a group of 55 countries from africa as india will be hosting the g20 summit upcoming g20 summit in september we think that this is the right time for us to raise our voice and say that african union also deserves to be a part here now there are two ways to look at it one way it's not remember g20 is not a group of 20 countries please remember if you say g20 is equal to 20 countries that is wrong g20 is 19 countries and european union so it's not that groups don't exist in g20 there are 19 separate countries and then there's european union similarly you can have one more group that is au however the problem here is when you talk about au or african union and you include that in g20 that would actually defeat the purpose of g20 because g20 was supposed to be 20 most de developed or 20 most advanced countries in the world so when you have 20 most advanced countries in the world and then you include 55 other countries the logic of g20 is lost that will become more kind of un only more kind of other groups g20 which is a smaller group would lose its relevance that is one way of looking at it the second way to look at it is why is india doing this why are the countries doing this see every big country has its eyes set on africa india japan china us european countries like france etc all of them are looking towards africa to exploit their resources to form partnerships to invest money and to exploit their mineral reserves specially so every country in the world is trying to make sure that we give an olive branch to them we help them in getting membership to the other groups as well so that they can actually come closer to us also remember india is not the first country to say this a few weeks back it was actually the american president joe biden who said that we think 
G20 should also have African Union. So it's not that our Prime Minister is the first world leader to say this. American President has also said this in the past. The African Union, as the name suggests, comprises of countries in the African continent. It has 55 of those countries. The history goes back to 1963 when we had organization of African unity. Later on, in 1980, Lagos Plan of Action, there was a resolution called Organization of African Unity, which led to the formation of what we call as African Union in 2002. So African Union name was given in 2002. Earlier, the name was given in a different manner called the Organization of African Unity. Also, if I say all the members of Africa are members of African Union, would that be true? No. Please remember, not all the countries of Africa are members of AU. Why? There are some countries that were disqualified. Their membership was taken away. For example, Somaliland's 2005 application, they had sent. It is still pending. Many countries don't recognize Somaliland. Then Sudan's membership was suspended. Guinea's membership has been suspended. Burkina Faso's membership has been suspended. Mali's membership has been suspended. So in short, don't remember all the names of these countries, but just remember if there is a statement which says all African countries are members of African Union, that is false. That is not true. African Union, that is AU has 55 members. There are some African countries which are not members of the African Union. Next, the last article for today is about outbreak of monkeypox in Asia Pacific. Recently, you saw WHO declared that monkeypox as global health emergency is over. But the problem is even now, we still have cases, especially in Southeast Asia and Western Pacific region coming up. We have discussed about monkeypox earlier as well. It's a viral disease. It spreads through human population through zoonotic spillover. Zoonotic means a disease that starts from the animals. So disease that originates from the animals, that is called the zoonotic disease. It can be transmitted between humans as well through co close contact and exposure to the infected bodily fluids as well. It is also been seen as spreading due to sexual, sexual contact, especially when there is a case of male and male engaged in a sexual contact. These are some of the instances of how the disease is spreading. It's a rare infection, but it is still existing in multiple parts of the world. It was first seen in Africa predominantly into early 2022, after which WHO said over 87,000 cases were reported around the entire world. The, the fatality rate is not as high as COVID. Out of 87,000 cases, 146 people have died. It was just declared as a global health emergency, but now that emergency notice have gone away. Even today, there are some cases that still exist in the world with regards to monkeypox. In June 2023, China reported four cases. There were a few cases in India's neighborhood in Sri Lanka, even in Dubai as well. It's not that the cases have gone down, but yes, at least in Europe, US, etc., the cases have gone down. And as unfortunate as it may sound, but the reality is, these global organizations such as WHO, etc., when they say something is not a global health emergency, their first reaction is, does the disease exist in USA and Europe? No? Okay, now the global health emergency is over. It's unfortunate, but that is how they actually look at it. Cases coming in from Africa, etc., are not given that high preference, but it should not exactly be the case. This monkeypox is reported in new territories as well. The problem is, when you have, let's say, only 87,000 infections around the world, please understand this. When you have a disease with 87,000 infections all around the world, you might say it is spreading fast. But the problem is for pharmaceutical companies to work on a medicine, to work on vaccine for such a disease, they don't think it's that profitable. They will only invest all the money and resources if they think that a lot more people are catching the disease so that they can sell their vaccine at a faster pace. This is why you saw so many companies developing the COVID-19 vaccine one after the other and then one after the other. But in monkeypox, etc., 
when you don't have such a high population catching this kind of a disease you will not see a lot of research happening because the companies have to invest a lot of money in this kind of research and it is not happening so far now monkeypox it is said it starts primarily from the rodents rodents such as rats etc then if they scratch or bite the humans or consumption of bush meat can then bring the disease to the humans and human to human transmission is also possible also this infographic gives you all the information that you require about this disease as i said vaccine for monkeypox specifically is not available around the world it is being said that smallpox vaccine can be used how effective that is it remains to be seen but right now smallpox vaccine is being used as an alternate to it rather than having a specific vaccine for monkeypox this brings us to the end of today's session of the hindu news of analysis there are a couple of practice questions from the mains examination point of view do try and write answers to these questions and see if you are able to get enough content for these have a happy sunday ahead do take some time off to revise also whatever you have studied throughout the entire week do catch us live tomorrow as well 10 am right here on our youtube channel if you have still not subscribed to it please do hit the subscribe button go over to our telegram channel attempt the quiz based on today's question so that you can revise once again thank you so much for watching have a good day ahead bye bye jai hind